All right. Welcome back from that very, very interesting interview with Dr. Ipiana and Gracia Maingi. Now we move on to something else. On Sport and Tech, today we're talking about animation as an art. How do we bridge the gap in the animation industry? And for this, I've been joined by experts. I'm about to introduce them. On my right, just next to me right here, uh, we have uh, Naftali Muryuki. I'm right. Uh, he's the creative director of NAFKI Creations, also the chairman of Association of Animation Artists Kenya. Uh, next, on the other side, we have Chief Nyamwea, who's the creative director and co-founder, Freehand Studios and Pulungu uh, P PA Production. Pungulupa. Pungulupa on. <laughs> I'm saying it wrongly. Pungulupa, okay. <laughs> then we have uh, Rachel Mwara. She says she loves going by the name Mwara more. She's the digital artist and animation uh, lecturer at Multimedia University. I actually went to Multimedia. Uh, she's also the project leader of the Almasi project. Welcome. Thank Glad you, to have you. you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll let you, um, each, each one of you, to tell us a little bit about what you do. I understand that you all come from the same association, but you have individual projects that you're doing. Let me start with you, Naftali. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So my name is Naftali Morioki. I am a creative. Mm -hmm. I do animation, motion graphics, uh, web design. Um, generally, I'm uh, a creative in different aspects. And uh, I'm the creative director of mm -hmm. Nafi Creations Multimedia Studio. And currently, I serve within the community of animators in Kenya okay. as the chair of the Association of Animation Artists Kenya. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. To you, Chief Nyamwe. Yes, my name is Chief Nyamwe. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the director, uh, creative director of Pungulupa and Freehand Studios. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I'm also a member of the association with uh, uh, under President Naftali. Okay. And uh, the main project that Pungulupa is engaged in currently is something called Uli and Tata's African Nursery Rhymes. Mm -hmm. which is a 2D animated African nursery rhyme series uh, that follows two children, mm -hmm. brother and sister duo, who mm -hmm. uh, discover uh, these uh, magical instruments in their, uh, in their house. And uh, they, using these instruments, they attract a, a big, uh, a giant bird, which is like the guardian, and it takes them to discover all the nursery rhymes all around mm -hmm. Africa. Okay, quite interesting, and we'll get into that later on. Okay. Uh, first, Mu uh, Mwara. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Mwara, Mwara Kungu. I'm a film and animation lecturer at Multimedia University. Um, I'm a digital artist, and my pet project is the Almasi project. Mm -hmm. Almasi is a little girl who goes into a mangrove forest with her cousins, and they just have fantastic av adventures all over Kenya in the greatest outdoor playground in the world, which mm -hmm. is the Kenyan wilderness. Okay. Yes. Interesting. And we have uh, short clips of this trailers we'll be uh, showing you just so that you understand what they're actually doing. But before we get to that, for, you know, we have different understanding of what animation is. Personally, uh, I'm usually confused between Cut, is there a difference between cartoon and animation and anime? No. Do we have it? It's just different words for the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, if it, it's fine. I actually like the word cartoon because more people know it. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, it's all the same things. So images moving. Okay. Drawn images moving. It can sometimes be puppets. Like you saw this uh, Pinocchio recently. It was entirely puppets. There were no mm. drawings there. Okay. Uh, Professor would probably have a more concise <laughs> definition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just point. drawings. So this is, yeah. this is Almasi. It's just mm. drawings coming to life. So these are the mangrove forests at Mida Creek. Okay. And this is Almasi and her cousins going mm. to play in the forest. Mm. Um, and they, they literally are. There are thousands of drawings. Some of them have a deformer in them so that we can make the legs bend when they walk. And then like this, this black cloud is thousands of different drawings of a black cloud mm. that's 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 what it is it's it's magic for artists wow how to make your drawings come to life all that's, right that's, so that's, that's what animation is about yes making yes. drawings come to life exactly, exactly. and the, yeah. the same thing with cartoons they i would say images because sometimes it's not drawing sometimes it's puppets you have stop motion animation uh -huh. you have 3d animation where it's a digital puppet Mm -hmm. So um, I would say it's a sequence of images uh, that are accompanied by sound sometimes, 
cartoons. Mm -hmm. Most people know cartoons. Okay. So, so the easiest way that we usually, because for, for a lot of people know cartoons, so the easiest way that you usually tell people about animation is uh, I do cartoons. Mm -hmm. But looking at animation, it's quite deep because besides cartoon, uh, animation is well uh, employed when it comes to VFX. Let's say, for instance, when somebody is doing a movie and uh, they cannot manage to do a certain uh, effect, they create digital doubles mm -hmm. using animation. And then for the person who is watching, they cannot... Uh, know the difference between the actual person and a digital double which was used to kind of create that effect that could have not been mm -hmm. uh, achieved using the camera but as Chiva said it's just it's just we usually say animation it's it's an illusion of life okay because one of the things that we usually do is um, it's kind of we study a lot and look because all the things that we create relate to what we do as humans mm -hmm. so it's more of looking into the things that uh, we do as human you do them within the uh, computer but also you are given the you know, opportunity to exaggerate more or else break the rules mm -hmm. be a little bit creative yeah. Yeah. more creative what goes into creating an animation we usually love to see watch animation i personally love animation but i know there's a lot that goes into it before you watch that one hour 30 minute <laughs> animation movie yeah. there's a lot so let me ask the professor to well to tell this me. this is almasia watching and mm -hmm. these three kids um shelling beans there were thousands of drawings of people's hands in the, in that in that picture mm -hmm. there, there were thousands that 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 the, the my animator Cheryl sat down and he well first you have to film it mm -hmm. so it's like you have to do the job twice because <laughs> okay. you know he had, someone was sent to go to buy bee, peas two women had to sit and shell peas and do this and then he, he took photos he, he took video of what they were doing and then he went and drew it he separated them out into, into each little um, movement that they were making with their hands as they were shelling the peas and he probably it's the first time it's happened in the digital universe, you know, wow. there are no other, well, nobody's, uh, nobody else is shelling peas mm -hmm. um, on, on, uh, in the digital world. That is what my animators are doing. They are creating their world in the digital world wow. so that the next generation of children will get to see themselves mm -hmm. and what they see around them every day in the digital world. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And that takes a lot. You have to go out and shoot it and then come back and draw it and bring it to life. So yes. how, you know, how long does that take just to come up with the production, final production? Oh, I've been working on Almasi. The first sketch was, uh, my daughter was, I was looking for an African girl. I, said, I realized I had one in the house. I said to her, stop, <laughs> stand yeah. there. I drew her. She was three. Wow. She is now 18. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's 18 years, 3 years, 15 yes. years. Yes, that's how long wow. it took me. I did the first pilot when I was doing my master's in 2008. Mm -hmm. That was in 3D animation. And I came home to Kenya to try and do it. And it took me about a couple of years to discover that uh, I don't actually, I'm not going to be able to do it in 3D <laughs> animation. Just the challenges of getting it done at all. Uh -huh. um, and so I started in, I started, I learned to do 2D animation, then I trained my students to do 2D animation, and then in 2018, I employed one girl to sit down, because you have to sit down six to eight hours a day to, mm -hmm. to actually do the work. And she made the first pilot for Almasi in 2018. Wow. And then, but then, then mm -hmm. we took it for critiquing, and then we did it again. Use the use the feedback. Did mm -hmm. it again. So we released episode one and two in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, but if we had plenty of funding, you know, I've got two animators in my studio. If we had plenty of funding, we've got ten ten machines, ten animators. I could produce an episode, a ten minute episode, in six to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, it's the resources that we don't have in Kenya. It's the resources that I personally oh, don't have. You personally? <laughs> yes. All right, I think that's because... We have the resources in Kenya. All right, so in yeah. Kenya, we actually have the resources to do 3D animation because some time back, I was talking with a guy, an mm -hmm. animator. He does graphics 2D mostly because yeah. he said it takes a lot of, I don't know, time to do 3D and, you It know, takes a lot of processing power. 
that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes but a lot of processing power, and in terms of bringing your vision to work to life in the digital world, it takes mm -hmm. a, lo a, a set of direct directorial skills that I did not have okay. to bring my vision to life in 3D. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, and for you, uh, Chief Namwa, you, you are a director. How easy is it for you? Is it easier? I would say it's uh, the best analogy is cooking. It all depends on what type of meal you're trying to, to have. You know, there's fast food which you can walk in, uh, like Sanford. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you walk in, walk out five minutes. And then there are other meals that you have to, first of all, book. You have to have be, uh, be on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you go there, you have to book three months in advance. You go. So that's the range of animation you have. There's as simple as flip book animation where you can get a, 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 a little... Uh, you know, drawing book, and then you write in the dog ears. You just make slightly change, like uh, something like a bird flying. So you have different positions of wings, mm -hmm. and the bird in different positions. You you draw them in your corner of your book. Uh, it's a test that I usually do when I when I travel around doing workshops with kids, and I want them to be enthusiastic about the art form. We do that. So they draw in the corner, and then you flip the edges and watch the subtle changes in the drawings. Yeah. So uh, you have the wings in different positions, and you flip. The, the bird flies. Mm. So that's a simple form of animation. Then you have much more elaborate, like the studio uh, releases, the big Hollywood ones, which they take four years, you know, producing. Mm. It involves multiple countries. They outsource sometimes to India or Philippines. So it all depends. Not, no two animations are made the same. I can speak about mine personally, right. which uh, we saw. Mm. Um, uh, the genesis of our project, Uli and Tata's African Nursery Rhymes, started when my, when my son was born. And for me, animation is primarily about story. It's not about the technique or the software, whether it's 2D, 3D, all of that is secondary. Mm -hmm. It depends on the story you want to tell. And then after you've determined the story that you want to tell, then you choose what medium will serve that story. Okay. If it's, is it a mature audience? Maybe they want more uh, photorealistic looking characters. Or is it a younger audience where you have more, more simple characters, that type of thing. So the, the primary thing I would say is story. Mm -hmm. And story is what dictates everything else. Okay. Yeah. So you need to have the story. Yes, that's the most important part. So uh, mm -hmm. I was just finishing. So my son was born. I realized there were no African nursery rhymes. I didn't want to sing Baby Shark to, 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 to him. I didn't want to sing Baba Black Sheep, all those other things. I was like, where are our songs? And, uh, you know, when I started asking around, I realized it wasn't just my problem. All the other young parents had the same problem uh -huh. where they were not finding uh, or they could not remember themselves African nursery rhymes. So I was like, why not we use animation since kids love it, travel around the country, and we went on a process of looking for funding. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, we now have funding for um, you know, uh, about seven episodes now, which will keep us busy for much of next year, just traveling around the country looking for these rhymes. Wow, amazing. Yeah. I think that's really awesome. And we'll have the, the two of them play. But before that, let me g g um, come to you, the president. Yeah. How do you see the animation um, industry in Kenya like what is the gaps that we have as of now um, animation industry we have a number of gaps um, mm -hmm. first of all you see funding is a big thing when it comes to film and animation mm -hmm. because for a creator to sit and produce uh, they need to just sit sit concentrate on telling the story concentrate on building quality but where funding lacks then people end up not having time to sit down and do this kind of production. So one of the things challenges that we're having is that you'll find a lot of, an, of animators in Kenya mm -hmm. are doing commercial work, which is TVCs, mm -hmm. uh, just commercials, 30 second commercials, so that they can manage just to pay the bills. Whereas, let's say for instance, if we had funding, somebody mm -hmm. can work for a year or two just to concentrate on uh, uh, narratives, or else episodial stories. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we have. And then also, um, when it comes to the capital of entry, when it comes to animation, it's quite on the higher side, let's say, for instance, for somebody who is doing 3D. Mm. Because when it comes to uh, rendering and also, let's say, for instance, uh, buying software, it's quite expensive. Okay. Nevertheless, there are um, different, uh, there are open source softwares, but now you also find it's dependent on, let's say, for instance, where did you go to school? Because let's say, for instance, if you went to school and they taught you uh, 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 something like 3D Studio Max, then you'll have to take time to switch maybe to something that's open source. And then another thing that we have as a challenge is, um, and th this cuts across board when it comes to the creative sector, you'll find that a lot of people mm -hmm. aren't working as mm -hmm. um, a unit. Let's say, for instance, if we were to look into the Western world, 
for a production that's done in the Western world, you find it's a lot of people doing very small things to make the production become true. Mm -hmm. But all of, uh, over here, you find that all of us are trying to do the same thing. There's no synergy in between people collaborating. Okay. So these are some of the things that we are trying to uh, tackle from the association perspective. Whereas, let's say, for instance, tomorrow we'll be having our International Animation Day. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be 27th and 28th, where we we are generally saying, as a community, can we come together and have discussions? Can we come together see and look at collaborate. the gaps that we have in mm -hmm. between us and see how can we can collaborate? Mm -hmm. And also, also doing, let's say, for instance, a mapping of equipments that we have around. Because, let's say, for instance, you might have chief, he might have a very good computer, but he doesn't use the computer all the time. But can we get to a point that, let's say, for instance, we can say in Kenya we have like 10 people with good workstations that if somebody, let's say, like Moira was to do her project, we can use these uh, yeah. machines to kind of fasten the work. Right. So there are different uh, gaps, but slow but sure, we are trying to solve them. And um, within, it's just a matter of time okay. for us to You're to slowly there. getting yes. there to yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. So now um, I'd want us to have some of the uh, trailers play so that we, we watch and uh, enjoy. I don't know if they're ready. Where the sea is blue and the sands are white. One day she went with her cousins into the mangrove forest to collect firewood and to cut poles for building. Out of the very tree roots it came, dark and ominous, a thick black cloud towering up before them. The cousins screamed and started running. But Almasi stood still, rooted to the spot, staring into the darkness. Then the black cloud sank down and faded away into the ground. She walked on, bees humming around her, birds chirping, her eyes open to every new thing. She saw something hanging from a branch. It wasn't a leaf, it wasn't a fruit, and it moved. It was alive. Somebody was coming out. Somebody with crumpled wings that slowly, slowly unfurled. The black and orange wings dried and the beautiful creature flew up and circled Almasi's head. Almasi's butterfly led her off through the mangroves. Skipping over the tree roots, fiddler crabs diving into their holes on all sides. Sea glass found herself growing smaller, smaller to the size of the butterfly. Its wings spread, waiting. A ray of sunlight crept over the windowsill and glinted on the sea glass lying on the table next to Almasi's bed. It sparkled and shimmered. A sudden flash lighting her face, she opened her eyes and smiled. My diamond, she whispered. My magic diamond. She stretched out her hand and picked it up, turning it this way and that. It shone with different colors. Auntie set down a bowl of beans for them to clean. The children laughed and chatted about this and that, but the conversation soon wandered back to the mangroves and the black cloud they knew they had all seen. Mama, I'm missing Mama, I'm missing Benjamin. 
You have just watched Almasi and Uli and Uli Tata. Uli Tata. Yes, I mean, it's very interesting. And those are 2D animations. I'm loving it. Especially uh, that our children can now learn, uh, you know, Luya and other languages, our local languages through cartoons, you know, through animation. It's very, very interesting. So, yeah, let me now get back to, <laughs> to okay. you. Uh, let's talk about um, what you're doing uh -huh. and NFTs. Huh. So many people don't know about NFTs. So tell us a little bit about that and how you're using it. Um, NFTs are cryptocurrency things. Mm -hmm. It's basically a picture with a bit of code attached. And that's, it's, um, it's unique. It's, there's, there's, th that's the only picture with that piece of code attached. And um, the Almasi NFTs are set up as a game. So there's 10,000 of them. You buy a set of 10 or 20. And in order to appear in the credits of Almasi episode three, you would need to collect a set, buy and sell and collect a set of mm -hmm. 10 characters. Mm -hmm. So the characters in the NFTs are all the characters from season one of Almasi. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's my big fundraising idea at the moment. Okay. Um, and it's Kenya's biggest NFT collection, and they're coming out tomorrow, actually, for mm -hmm. International An Animation Day. Okay. Um, and they are, they'll be available on OpenSea, which is the biggest NFT marketplace, and they're on Ethereum, which mm -hmm. is the main um, codable blockchain. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, they, they cost about $15, $16 each at the moment. Um, yeah, they're a great way for Kenyans to onboard mm -hmm. into cryptocurrency and they, they'll get to buy pictures, art, which references Kenyan things. You know, the children are holding uteos and kiondos and kikapus. Mm -hmm. um, the materials are like gong gong oils where it's combined with one of my paintings of the gong hills mm -hmm. and uh, goat skin material and mabati materials uh, the nfts all have a number of different traits and then in the collection of ten thousand they'll be graded for yeah. value based on the rarity the 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 co the collected rarity of each trait so the the site will rank them because mm -hmm. when you buy it's like it's it's a it's a magic basket you know <laughs> you buy 10 and yeah. then they'll be minting for 60 days or you'll or they'll, you'll get your 10 all the same pre-reveal image and when the minting is finished or when they're sold out um i'll press the button and they'll you'll find out what you got okay and you'll have to buy and sell to get whatever you to get the full set if you want to get your name in the credits and from an artist's point of view that is the most important thing about nfts because yeah. like if i buy a painting from you and i buy it for 40k and then in 10 years, you're very famous and I sell it for 400K. You'll never see any of that 400K. True. But an NFT in its contract has 10% going to the artist. Mm -hmm. So the time you sell it for 400K, I'll still get another 40K. Yeah, the profits. Yes. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that will just happen mm -hmm. over and over. As a, as a, so the point of an NFT collection like mm -hmm. mine is to encourage buying and selling. So there'll be a different set of, cre of NFTs that you have to collect to appear in the credits of each episode uh, all right. over the ne over the course of the next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know if you have photos of that from your website. My producer will advise me uh, oh. as we go on yes. with the rest of the questions so that we just get a good understanding of how that operates. What yeah. do you think about that? Uh, my funding, uh, our funding strategy mm -hmm. for Pungulupa is a bit more traditional. Okay. Uh, it was uh, our pilot episode, uh, not this. Our pilot episode was funded by uh, the Kenya Film Commission. We are very proud of that, that it came from public funding. Okay. So it was made for, for Kenyan kids primarily at first, and it was also funded with Kenyan money, so I'm very happy. Um, uh, and also, we also put in our own money for the pilot episode, the one mm -hmm. that we went to Kakamega, uh, you know, traveling around the forest. That was yeah. a good start. And then uh, later on, we held an event. Uh, invited stakeholders and managed to get funding from the French Embassy as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a full-time job. The thing uh, that about animation is that 
to succeed, it has to be a team sport. You have to have people specializing. Otherwise, you don't get good enough in your, in your lane. You don't get good enough in your domain. Okay. So even the word alone, animation, is deceptive. Because under any animation that you watch, there are many different roles that go into that. There are storyboard artists. There are uh, screenwriters. There are people who just do illustration alone, no animating, just illustrating the, the, the frames. You have the animators themselves. You need a producer, very important. So it's a whole team. It's a team sport, just mm. like the way you have in film. And of course, uh, producers are as important in, in, in animation as they are in film, even though there are, are, are not so many uh, animation producers. We were lucky that we have a very good uh, animation producer who also happens to be my, my spouse. <laughs> ah. uh, so uh, her name is Sarah. She's probably watching. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, with everybody specializing in their lane, uh, uh, you, you, you have to go for both traditional and non-traditional sources mm -hmm. um, to, to, to fundraise. Okay. And we are getting better at it, I would right. like to say, yeah, since we started uh, over 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And now I want to ask um, you, Mr. President, uh, with now AI coming in the picture and everything, does it make animation easier or is it coming to, you know, there's the fear that AI is also coming to take over jobs. Is animation also on the line with this? Well, from, from where I sit and uh, looking at the possibilities, AI is a big game, big game changer, but within the animation industry, if you adapt it early and learn, it mm -hmm. becomes something that you can build upon and make work easier. That's number one. And also, it becomes something that, let's say, for instance, it can help you explore more when it comes to digital uh, story creation and mm -hmm. uh, trying to look at different areas. Let's say, for instance, beside animation just being an art by itself, there are other form of art that build on animation. Let's say, for instance, gaming, uh, VR, uh, that's virtual reality, augmented reality, of which it's, it's kind of a game changer. Because let's say, for instance, if you were to consider AI and the whole discussion to do with the metaverse, there is no metaverse without animation. Okay. So looking from where I sit, it, it's a big disruptor, yes but it's something that you can build upon if we are open to learning and adapt quick, quickly to it. Mm -hmm. It's something that a lot of animators will um, appreciate okay. over time. All right. Uh, as animators, both of you, mm. are you open to, to AI, to adapting AI, um, incorporating it in your work? Let me start with you. Um, I, I practice openness. Um, I think that everything could be used as a tool to get what I want done. Um, I, uh, but it's a bit difficult to know what stance to take with AI. Mm -hmm. I asked my 18-year-old daughter yesterday mm -hmm. what, I, what she thought about AI, and she shouted at me for 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> she was like, yeah, she ended up with, yeah, t tell me you're a no-talent waste of space without telling me you're a no-talent waste of space. <laughs> she Why? gave me a whole a thing about how her and, and she's in art, she's in college in London she's uh -huh. in sixth six form college in London I thought you know very uh, uh, forward thinking kind of place yeah. like n me and my friends hate it I thought it was a really? good thing at first and uh -huh. then I started seeing what people were doing with it she gave me a whole tutorial look at this look at this look <laughs> at this she kept sending me <laughs> images they, they, they just you can just tell they're AI generated mm -hmm. and then this one is something that per somebody worked on and it's 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 just disrespectful that's okay. what that was the basic thing it is just disrespectful mm. you think you can create art by giving a set of instructions to a gadget and it's what about me mm -hmm. I don't know I think of an artist as a person who must work to be alive okay. if they are not working they're not alive mm -hmm. yeah and if, if 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 their market is destroyed I mean if you can tell a, 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 a gadget to produce a piece of work in the style of Monet, then oh. who's going to buy Monet? Exactly. Yeah, which would be absolutely fine if we all had, you know, the big in universal income and we all had food coming in, our bank accounts were just full, we didn't have to worry about where we were going to get money <laughs> to live from. Um, yeah. But it's, 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 AI would be great if it was used for wealth distribution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> yes. I'm okay. sure we will. Uh -huh. Okay. What, what's your take on it? I, 
think it depends very much on how a uh, studio defines itself. Mm -hmm. At Pungulupa, freehand, we don't define ourselves uh, as animators. We define ourselves as storytellers, primarily. Okay. Animation is a tool. Mm -hmm. If there's, if there's another tool that's going to make uh, some punishing, painstaking work easier, by all means, uh, story is the priority. Mm -hmm. yeah? If there's something that can, can you know, um, remove all the grunt work, there's a lot of grunt work. There are, there are animators who break their backs, you know, who cannot uh, you know, walk. You know. Mm -hmm. you know, there are even these practices that we have to do standing up every half hour so that you don't get back pains. Mm -hmm. if, there's, if there are tools that can help that be easier, Mm -hmm. uh, well and good, but of course there are IP issues. Uh, if the art being used to for for, for this generative AI is 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 taken without consent, that is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, artists should be aware. If you get um, like I had an interesting case where there was a client who came and asked for 500 illustrations, and that was the first time in my whole career anybody has asked for 500 illustrations. Hold that. And you know, um, I even I even uh, reached out to the lawyer and I said, um, <laughs> you know. Do you have any experience with uh, AI contracts? And there's none. So even the lawyers are playing catch up. There are clauses that you have to put into the contract called uh, AI derivative rights. That if somebody uses your artwork to train an AI to uh -huh. to produce art in your style, you should you should retain rights to 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 you, you should retain rights to your style. your style. And okay. and the lawyers also have to play catch up to being able to write these clauses into our contract. So generally I I I like to see like where is the value being captured and move upstream. I think the value is in story. Even mm -hmm. now when you look at something like Pixar, many people don't know but when you see an animation like Kung Fu Panda mm -hmm. by Pixar, it was entirely animated in India. But people don't know that. Yeah. You know? Because mm -hmm. the IP is being held in America. Mm -hmm. So already we are using humans in the way people use AI just outsourcing it to different countries. I don't see a big difference. It's still, it's still capitalism at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's still that structure. The problem is not AI. AI would be a wonderful thing for humanity if we were not living under an economic system that, that meant that you were paid, um, uh, that, that basically, uh, basically you, you, you cannot live without a wage. That's mm -hmm. why AI is a problem. But if, if, we, if we're not in this wage economy where people had to earn money from wages, That's then, exactly then, the same thing then I would be a wonderful thing, <laughs> yes. you know. People could work, people could work less. Uh, so that's a, that's a different discussion. It's a, uh, that's, we, we'll not be in animation, we'll be in economics. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. I think all in all, if I have to say, I'm happy about uh, some of the advances. Mm -hmm. yeah. That we're making in technology, all right. Yes. <laughs> well, I had some things to say on it. Oh but no, that's you exactly, basically that's agreed. basically the same thing mm -hmm. I said, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now, for people that are looking into getting, as we come to a close on this, people that are looking into getting to do animations, to do storytelling, what does it? What do they need to do? What do they need to know? Um, give us from a professor's point of view, and also you'll tell us. Um, what I have observed is that people who don't know how to draw don't mm -hmm. stay in animation that if you really want to make your career in animation, you need to know how to draw. Mm -hmm. And I'm very clear that everybody can draw. Everybody can draw. I'm bad at drawing. <laughs> everybody <laughs> can draw. Okay. You can draw actually before you can walk. Really? And my, I, 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 I sometimes give away an artist creation kit to, mm -hmm. to, to my friends with children. And I have found that the most important section of that thing is yeah. that you have to find it in your tidy Kenyan soul <laughs> to throw the paper on the floor. You actually have to take a bad paper and throw it on the floor like this and let the children lie down on that paper, mm -hmm. pick up their pencils and draw. Mm -hmm. And everybody can draw. It's just that we all have a number of bad drawings inside before the good, good drawings can start coming out. Okay. And if you can get rid of all your bad drawings by the time you're five years old, You'll be a brilliant artist for the rest of your life. It gives you a lot of confidence. Okay. So me, I'm starting with the survivors of the 844 who mm. come to me and they want mm. to be animators. Mm. Then I have to make them sit down and draw. I can do a drawing course for three months, which can make you somewhat able to draw. Right. But the ones who get really good are the ones who finish university and then sit down and draw. Mm -hmm. And they draw, and you just you just have to draw. You draw on papers, you draw on your tablet, you, you draw. You draw. Everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> okay. because an animation is a succession of 2D images. Mm -hmm. Even a film is. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to create a 2D image. 
to right. do to do any animation. Even if you're going to do 3D animation, you still have to know how to place your camera so that we understand what's happening in that screen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so all. drawing is fundamental. You have yes, to know how to do it. Yes, it's fundamental. And as as he says, you can you can draw. You can, I've I've successfully done it with six year olds. I use post it notes, um, and you can actually make a, do a transform. Mm -hmm. Six years old, okay. you can do it. I can teach you in fifteen minutes. Okay. Interesting. So it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought it takes, uh, you have to be born an animator for you but to But also be for those who cannot draw, they shouldn't be discouraged. There are many professions under the mm -hmm. animation the umbrella. Like something like rigging, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they are highly sought after, highly paid uh, professionals. Like right now uh, for Uli and Tata, we're working with a rigger from Nigeria. For someone who doesn't know what rigging is? So rigging is basically <laughs> putting joints into a, a model. So you have, you have various joints. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a, w okay, technical terms, we have uh, two-legged uh, models, bipeds, basically a, a creature that walks on two legs, four-legged quadrupeds, uh -huh. you have different uh, joints. So you have to put in joints. Anything that will move, you need to put in a rig. So oh. if it's fingers, you have that's one, two, three, multiplied mm -hmm. by five, uh, 15 on your fingers. L anything that anything moves that's on moving. your face, that would be your eyebrows, eyes, eyelids, mouth, whatever. Just doing all that, there's no drawing that goes in there. All right. But it, it uh, actually, what would be really helpful if you, is if you understand skeletons and if you're just like uh, somebody <laughs> who, if, if not animating, would have been in uh, surg surgery, uh, there would have been a surgical student okay. or something. <laughs> Somebody who loves skeletons would probably be a good rigger. Wow. So um, it's a big umbrella and there are many professions. Don't let um, l not having one skill or the other stop you. If you're passionate about it, just come to it and see where you fit in. Okay. Yeah. Even a storyteller can come on board yes, as long absolutely. as you can do a good story, you need then good you can be part of the team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Animation mm -hmm. is soundtrack driven. Musicians. Okay. As yeah. Well. Voice over actors. Voice actors. You know, voice actors rather. Yeah. People yeah. like you know Elsa Fanjora, who yeah, you might know him as an actor, very good uh, voice actor for animation. Uh -huh. There's so many. Uh, There's so many, so many aspects to it. Like the only yeah. other genre I can think of that is more multidisciplinary than animation is games. Games employs every single domain you can think of, including uh -huh. physicists. All right. Maybe All right. another way to look at it is uh, from from the pipeline, as Chief is saying. Like we usually talk of animation from the technical aspect, mm -hmm. mostly the people who are doing the animation. But if you look at the whole value chain and the whole spectrum and the whole pipeline, it employs a lot of people uh, because, um, as Chiva said, the storytellers and all all that. All these people become part and parcel of the pipeline and all those become career by themselves. Mm -hmm. But one of the fundamental things that I, I think from a technical perspective of anybody who would want to get into animation, let's say from, from for instance to be an animator, mm -hmm. you have to be patient. <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's one of the yeah. things. You have to be patient, yeah. you have to be open to learning by yourself mm -hmm. and unlearning. Okay. Yeah. So this is a fundamental. Yes. Also. If, if, if you can watch paint dry and smile, then you're fine. Wow. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> not for me. And yeah. you have to be also very comfortable with feeling stupid. Okay. Yeah. You, you have to spend vast. I mean, I uploaded that whole NFT collection yesterday, uh -huh. and it took three weeks of feeling stupid. Wow. And just going to work every day and staring at my computer and trying different things and. <laughs> Just feeling really stupid. Really get it <laughs> yeah. Okay. Speaking of the NFTs, I, I think we've not been able to get them. Oh. But where can people get your website? Oh, follow me on Twitter at mm. Almasi NFTs. I'm showing them all the time, sharing them <laughs> all the time, Almasi NFTs. Um, I, yeah, Almasi I NFTs. share like 10 tweets a day. Okay. With different pictures of the different NFTs. Mm. They're just there all the time. All right. So, yeah. yeah. People can get it at El Mercy NFTs. Now, where can people get? Uh, just search for Uli and Tata. Mm. Uli and Tata's African Nursery Rhymes, and it'll give you all our socials. We're most active on Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uli and Tata? African Uli and Tata's African Nursery Rhymes. Nursery Rhymes. Yeah. Okay. Um, talk to us about the event and then how you know other animators, storytellers can join the association, maybe. So, basically, the event that we'll be having tomorrow and Saturday, mm -hmm. it's a uh, a community event but we are open also to having other people on board considering uh, we'll also be having an intermediary event uh, mm -hmm. that's from Fakugesi we'll have partnership with Fakugesi from South Africa 
where they'll be coming to share their research findings when it comes to animation, gaming, VR, and XR in the African market. Mm -hmm. They have done a research uh, in different African countries looking at the possibilities of can animation, gaming, and uh, related uh, fields um, be able to employ uh, more people and can we manage to be owners of IP within our sector? And um, besides that, we'll be having a number of forum discussions and also talks just to try and bridge the gap. Let's say, for instance, we'll be having, we'll have students who are in animation school. All the animation schools in Kenya will have students uh, joining in the event. And also we'll have uh, mm -hmm. people like Moara and uh, and, and Chief mm -hmm. joining as profes professionals who have been there in the industry for quite some time. And also we'll have other partners, let's say for instance, people who will come to speak to animators about becoming punkable. And also looking at the various other um, arts that build on animation, gaming, and comics. So it's more of looking at mm -hmm. everything uh, that animation covers and also having impactful discussions of where we would want to move as an industry. Okay. Yeah. Where would you want to move as an industry? We would love to see, as of now, in Kenya, we have only had one feature animation fil film, that's Terra Storm, which was done by Andrew Kagia last year. Mm -hmm. We would like to see more collaborations. If we can have at least even, let's say, for instance, three animations, then that shows we are growing because mm -hmm. three animations, feature film animation, would employ a lot of people. So that, let's say, for instance, students who are coming from institutions like where Mora is teaching, mm -hmm. they'll come out of school and they'll find a job market. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you all for coming on board and sharing this amazing insights. At least uh, I know that I can get into the field, but only as a voice actor, maybe. <laughs> I think that's where I'd fit more. And uh, again, for sharing your projects and insights, at least people also know that it's a great career option for people that have a passion in animation, right? Yes. Okay. Thank so you for having us. Sorry? Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us. Most welcome. Yeah. So thank you for staying with us. We've been talking about animation as an art and how to bridge the gap. That's there. We've been talking to Naftali, Chief, and Moira. Uh, you can get them on their social. As they've mentioned, we'll also have this uploaded on YouTube so that you can follow them straight there. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back.